everybody, welcome to Plate Culture. This is another episode brought to you by uh, myself, Lucas, and this is my mother. Woo! Hello. <laughs> After many weeks of asking her, she finally agreed to come on the YouTube channel. So everybody make her feel welcome. She's awesome, she's a great cook, great at baking as well. And so we're really happy to have her on here to talk about the different foods we made. And mom, what type of food did we make this week? We made Finnish food. Finnish food! This is something that we've been wanting, that was loud, that was shrill. <clears throat> Finnish food. And we are so excited about it. This is a type of food, obviously, uh, our family is yeah. from Finland. Mom and dad were born and raised there, and uh, we grew up going back very frequently. So this is a familiar food group. This is something that we probably know the most about as far as different cultures go. So we're really excited to share with you guys. Fun fact, we made Finnish food night on the night of midsummer, which is a big celebration in Finland. And it is celebrated all over Finland in many different ways. It's a really big national holiday, and so we, we decided to go with the theme of midsummer and Finnish summer grill food. So, Mom, would you like to kind of talk about what, what summer grill food is in Finland? So in the summertime, what that means is when it's green and snow has melted, it may not mean yes. that it's warm. <laughs> in the summertime, the green winter, as I call it sometimes. Um, <laughs> to clarify, really. to clarify. Cold to my mother can be 68 degrees sometimes. So it could be, so it could be 58, <laughs> 60 degrees, but it is summer. We're going to be grilling outside because yes, it's summer. Because it's summertime. Which is fine. Yeah, exactly. So everybody's got their grill in their backyard. A lot of people have their summer homes that, you know, are by a lake, lake house, cottage. Um, Fun fact, there are over 100,000 lakes in Finland, and so lake property is very affordable, and lots of people have summer cottages and lake houses there. Very true. But even if you don't have a lake cottage, you usually have a grill, even if it's in your balcony in your apartment complex. Yes, very much. So grill, so, grill food is really important, especially in the summertime in Finland, and it's, it's eaten very regularly. So you grill all kinds of food. Nowadays, it's more vegetables, you know, halloumi cheese, you know, healthier options. But then there are others that still enjoy grilling the sausages and the beef and all the meats. But the benefit of grilling is that you can grill a little bit for everyone. Yes. So with different diets, it works mm -hmm. out super well. And we are big fans of Finnish sausage. It is some of the best in the world. Watch out, Germany. All right, so for the first course, we made a traditional, traditional? Is it traditional? I don't know if it's traditional, but it's made very frequently in Finland. It is very similar to a quiche Lorraine. In Finnish, we call it kinkupirakka. And it's a lot of times it's done actually as a separate evening supper yes. snack, but we used it as an appetizer. It worked out well. For the purpose of this video, we kind of threw together a lot of different meals that you might see separately in Finland, but we wanted to get as many of the traditional Finnish dishes into the video as possible, so. So Kish Loren, um, or Kinkupiraka, which is, it's really not Kish Loren, but we just call it that, um, is you bake the crust, so I'll talk about the crust sure. because that was the start. So I decided to make the crust from scratch uh, as I try to do with about anything that we make. If it's possible for me to make the dough, to make the sauces, anything that we make on this channel, if it's possible to make it from scratch, I will usually try to do so. I took it upon myself to learn how to make a pie crust, which I've never done before. And so if there's any pie bakers out there that have better ways of doing it, feel free to let me know, drop it in the comments. Uh, but I think it turned out really well. First, I took some sugar and flour and then added some cold cubes of butter. And as I was mixing in the cold cubes of butter, I was uh, kind of squeezing them to break them apart. But you want to still have little clumps of the butter in the flour before you start adding water. Uh, and that's where the flakiness of the crust comes from. So once I had kind of uh, softened those, that butter, we also added some shortening that was cut into cubes as well and did the exact same thing. And once kind of all those start to clump together, then you added some ice water 
and you want to make sure this is cold again because once again you don't want the grease you don't want the shortening or the butter to mix in with the flour as a liquid you want it to stay as a solid and so having that ice cold water be the mixing agent it keeps those that grease and that butter it keeps it uh, solid in the mixture and then once you've added the water it comes together into form a dough and we put it out into a circle on a piece of shrink wrap wrapped it up put it in the fridge for about an hour to make sure that the butter again stays cold and then we pulled it out rolled it out and put it in the dish and then when you put it in the dish just remember to poke holes with a fork so yes. it will stay even and level so when we did the filling you mix basically cheese milder cheese like Munster, which is very traditional works but you can use whatever you've got in the fridge ham cubed up um, sour cream cream salt pepper and then two eggs and two eggs and then you mix all of that together and you pour it into the pie crust and, and then you put it in the oven and you're done until it's golden on the top and that was amazing it was delicious Anyway, uh, thank you so much, Mom, for coming and joining us. Mom and helped us make time. the appetizer and helped inspire the rest of the meal as well. And so thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. I can't wait for the next recipes that you guys are cooking. Yep. Bye. Bye. For the main course, we basically did everything on the grill with the exception of a few things. We had some chicken that we flattened with a hammer. We had some of these vegetable foil wrap buppy things that I don't know the English word for. We also made some potatoes, a salad. We also had some grilled halloumi, two types of bread, including a, a rye bread, which is traditional in Finland, and then some grilled sausage as well. And some smoked salmon. The chicken was probably what took the longest time for prepping because it included making the traditional Finnish grill seasoning from scratch, which I'm, it's not saying much. It comes in like a little packet. So I Googled a recipe for Finnish grill seasoning and I came up with it. And it is salt, pepper, allspice, chili powder, not chili powder, we talked about this. It had some paprika though, and it had onion powder, garlic powder, and a little bit of olive oil and some sugar. We also had some sugar. I don't have my sheet. We added the grill seasoning to some flattened chickens and to flatten the chickens, we took some shrink wrap around them and then hit them with a meat hammer until they were flat. Traditionally, Finnish meat like chicken and other grill meats that you cook at these grill outs is pre-packaged and it's usually flattened out and it already has the, the spice on it. Creating this was a little bit of a challenge, but I think we got it done with the flattened meats and then also with the, the grill spice that we made. And so we just threw those on the grill. Make sure you don't overcook those because dry chicken is the worst. <clears throat> Speaking of worst, we also had some sausages. Samu, he made me say that. Read your script. Samu made me say that. I didn't want to make the pun. Okay. <clears throat> For the sausages, we had three different types. We had a basic pork and beef frankfurter, which is just a regular hot dog sausage, but it is made in the original encasement, which is the lining of a pig's intestine. Something you didn't know, but now you know. The other two that we had were different types of sausages I found at the grocery store. Nothing here is the same as in Finland, but I tried to find the ones that would be the most similar, and it's hard to explain. You wanna make sure you score your sausages. I like to score them in both directions, so it makes little X's on the top and on the bottom of each of the sausages, and that just allows them to cook without bursting and bubbling up and stuff. Another part of the meal that took a good bit of time to prepare was the vegetable wrap things. Again, I don't know the English word. In Finnish, we call them nuti, and it's a very common thing to do in Finland in a little foil container sometimes, but a lot of times just using regular old aluminum foil. We just pick some vegetables that we like. Some people like using zucchini and squash. I picked the kind of the traditional vegetables that we use as a family. So I put some broccoli, mushrooms, and onion into a different varieties. So some of them had broccoli and mushrooms, some of them had onion and broccoli just differing so that we can appease all of the picky eaters in our family. After cutting up the vegetables and putting those in there, you add some spices. I like to add some garlic powder, onion powder, and paprika, a drop of olive oil. 
a spoonful of something like creme fraiche or a soft cheese. I also added some goat cheese crumbles. So here you can really get creative with it, but a lot of times you'll add some kind of soft cheese onto the top of these vegetables. Wrap them up real tight, make sure there's no leaks in the aluminum foil, and then you set those on the grill while you're cooking the rest of your meats. One aspect of Finnish culture and Finnish grilling that is borrowed from another culture is the use of halloumi cheese. This is a cheese, I believe it's from Cyprus originally. Halloumi cheese is typically grilled and it is a, kind of a salty cheese and it squeaks when you chew it. Uh, so some people affectionately in our family call it squeaky cheese. So halloumi squeaks a little bit and it's salty so you want to eat it with something else. It's not a cheese that you would eat by itself but it goes very well with the summer grill foods, whether on a piece of bread with some salmon or with your salad or even with the rest of the meats that you're eating. It just kind of all goes together and the hula meat adds a really nice touch to it. Lastly, it would not be a summer finish meal without some steamed potatoes. And those are the personal favorite of Sophia, my little sister. These are typically made by taking some fingerling potatoes, some smaller potatoes, Make sure you rinse them thoroughly so there's no dirt on the outside and then you steam them or boil them in a pot and once they're boiled and soft then you drain the water and once you've drained them you want to add a good handful of dill and then once that dill is in there you cover it with some a paper towel a moist paper towel and then you put the lid on it's not moist oh it absorbs the moisture I have just been informed, the paper towel is not moist, it becomes moist from the steam. So there you have it, you learn something new every day. You put the paper towel on top of the dill and the potatoes and you cover it and you let that steam for a good 5-10 to 10 minutes and it's ready to serve. When you serve it, make sure you serve it with butter, it's the best way to do it. The more butter, the better, as Paula Deen likes to say. I don't know if she says that, but she uses a lot of butter. The important thing to do while you're cooking and eating this is first of all, spend time with family. It's really important in Finnish culture to spend time with your family around the summer kitchen and with the grill food with good friends. Uh, and also make sure you're heating up your sauna so that that's warm by the time you're done eating. And then you can have some sauna, you can go sauna, which is super important. If you didn't know, there are something like three million saunas in Finland and only about five to six million people. It's really important to the culture and we have one in our backyard which is great and we enjoy it every time we have one of these dinners. Now it's a regular Finnish summer night. You've had your main course, you've had your appetizers, you've gone and saunaed and you've freshened up and you are ready for something sweet. Your go-to dessert is one of my personal favorite is lettu which is a Finnish version of a crepe. So to get the recipe for this, I decided to call my grandfather. He is the master letto maker in our family and he is super good at it. He taught me how to make it growing up and I've always watched him do it and tried to be like him when making it. So I called him and I got a really fun response from him. I asked him for his recipe and I'm going to give it to you as he gave it to me, paraphrased as best I can. He said to start with about a liter of milk, depending on the amount of people. Then you add one to two eggs. Then about as much sugar as you want, depending on if you want to make it sweeter or less sweet. A pinch of salt, and then flour until it looks right. So, uh, I mean, you guys can follow that as well as I can. I did my best. Sometimes you have to add more flour, less flour. Um, you can't add less flour. So the consistency should be somewhere between honey and pancake batter. This is a trial and error, guys. You can always add more flour. It's harder to add more liquid. So if you think you have enough flour, try making one of the crepes. And if it doesn't look good, add more flour. We will put a complete guess of what amount of flour to use in the description below. Good luck. Once you have mixed all that batter together, you want to let it sit for about 30 minutes and have it covered with a paper or a kitchen towel. Once it's covered for a little bit, then you take it out, you stir it a few times, make sure that it's the right consistency. Again, guessing game there. And then you cook it on a either an iron, kind of a cast iron surface or a nonstick surface. You wanna put a good, a little knob of butter at the bottom. Let that melt, but don't let it burn. And then pour a scoop of batter on top. They need to be thin but not so thin that they break when you flip them. Just doing a few of these, you'll be able to find that right consistency. So once it's poured in, you then wanna take a 
rubber or plastic spatula or silicone, something that's nice and light, and you want to spread the batter out over the top of the crepe or the letto until it starts to firm up. Once you see that there's no loose batter on the top, you start sliding your spatula underneath and trying to get the edges separated. Hopefully the butter has done its job and it doesn't stick to the bottom. Once all of the batter has dried up off the top, cooked up off the top, you wanna to flip it by either flipping it with the pan or taking a spatula and flipping it over. And then you cook the other side for about the same amount of time and then you fold it in half and then in half again, so into a quarter and you set it aside. After you're done making them, some popular toppings for eating them include ice cream, freshly made whipped cream, which I made the night of. Sliced strawberries are really popular in Finland, especially in the summertime, as they grow there and are delicious. Better than anywhere else in the world, by the way. I also have had it with Nutella, regular old sugar with some maple syrup. There's so many different ways that you can go about this. Feel free to get creative. If you try it at home, let us know what you made and what you liked. My ultimate favorite happens to be with ice cream and a little bit of whipped cream. Awesome, well that's it for us today. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We have so many more finished dishes that we want to show you guys in the future. Make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Halloumi, 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 halloumi. <laughs> Somewhere between a nectar and a honey and a panther. Somewhere between a gave, honey. Somewhere between milk and bread dough.